Hello, everyone. This is Amy Eccles Irwin from FilmFestivalCircuit.com and the Assistant Director of the Austin Comedy Film Festival. Uh, today, we're interviewing one of our participating filmmakers. Stacy Price is the co-director, writer, and star of Hunt Me. Stacy, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> uh, well, let's jump right in. Hunt Me is uh, it's hilarious, but it's heartfelt. What inspired you to make this film? Well, um, I was working on this character at Groundlings. And I looked at a hunting magazine and there was an ad for male enhancement. <laughs> and it didn't make me think about um, the hunter that could potentially buy that. It actually made me think about the wife, mm. the partner, and then their relationship. Very interesting. Okay. So this is inspired from uh, just a, a chance moment, seeing an advertisement that made you think of the whole world that, uh, uh, that occupied. What was it like uh, writing from that standpoint, from this, you know, sparse inspiration? Well, it felt very lonely, if you can imagine it. I was just imagining yeah, yeah. being a partner and, um, and feeling such desperation and need. And what's so interesting is that um, at, through acting programs and things, people have talked about two different emotions kind of being the jumping off point of everything, which is like love and fear. Okay. And so my character really came from a place of love and need. And I really feel like the other character came from a place of fear and just the two of them kind of colliding, you know? Okay. Yeah. That's super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of curious. Uh, so you embody this, these two emotions, uh, you know, very well. And, you know, of course there's humor in this, but there's, it's, it's sort of serious as well. What was that onset dynamic like? What was it like uh, working with your, your co-star? The, the chemistry is very good. Um, Chris Fairbanks is a really talented, um, hilarious stand-up comedian and actor. And um, prior to this, my only incarnation of this character were like monologues at Groundlings, uh, character open mics. And then finally this character got to have a husband and it was so wonderful to see him fill in this world. And like, there was this one wonderful moment where there was this line and he just adjusted one word and it made it like 1000 times better. It was like this wonderful improvement. And um, it, was, um, it was just a wonderful, fun play. That's awesome. Well, really, I think it, it uh, these acting experiences hit their stride when people have room to, you know, really embody the character, can throw in some improvisation. Um, uh, so I'm kind of interested uh, with the location and the costuming. Uh, you know, okay. the location looks incredible. And I love that low key light, you know, that early, early morning. It, yeah. it fills me with a sense of dread. Some people, you know, hunters are filled with a sense of excitement. What was it like setting all that up? Well, uh, Robert uh, Vornkel is my co-director. Okay. And he had a really specific vision for the look. And we had discussed, um, well, Ozark, the TV show okay. Ozark. Oh, yeah. Having a little bit of the feel for it. Um, so in general, we, I was so happy to be there. Um, it, Robert suggested this location and we drove um, two hours without traffic outside of the city to where there was no cell phone reception. It was oh, wow. in the middle of nowhere. Um, and there was such a, an incredible sense of reality that was brought to it. Um, and it's really amazing because no matter what you envision for your piece, whether, um, whether you're coming from the acting standpoint where you're filling in all the character work, or if you're writing, like envisioning what it would look like, it's still a surprise when, when you're actually there. Totally. And so... Um, there was a line, if I can just throw this in, there was yeah. a line that was written, um, you look like a painting of a pilgrim. And <laughs> I said it, my boyfriend, I said it to my boyfriend, just like joking around when yeah. we were taking a trip and I wrote it in the script. I just wrote it in the script and I was like, I don't know if this is going to make it in rehearsals or in the shooting, but I think it's, it's going to be funny for me. Mm -hmm. And I show up and we're having like this little table read before our shoot and um, Robert and Danielle, Danielle, who was the artistic director, producer, um, she, they were just like, we love that line. It's so funny. And I was like, I don't know why you guys think that line is funny. I'm like, I know why I think it's funny. Right. And then they're like, so what did you do? You must have looked at pictures. 
So at this location, there was a painting of a pilgrim. So they thought that I had looked through the location photos, oh, saw this picture, and wrote it into the script. And and um, oddly enough, that didn't make it into the cut. Um, it didn't work. It slowed down the comedy, mm. but it made it feel like we were really in the right location for this totally. short. Well, and I also love that it kind of has that um, that timeless American. I don't know, sort of just like you know, it's it's non discernible if it's the '80s, if it's contemporary, if it's earlier, and it has this. Uh, I don't know, sort of everlasting feel, especially with the, the nature of the drama that is is coursing through it. Um, Thank you. So, uh, I'm curious, um, what did you learn from this experience? Did you take away any new insights on writing, directing, or acting? Um, I learned a lot. I learned to just be open, just okay. be wide open to whatever can happen on set or um, whatever uh, you find in the moment, um, whatever that the your co-star brings to the table um whatever um your co-director in my case um has some insights into um and just like for example um we didn't mention um you asked about costumes and i didn't kind of fill it in the chris had some of those things in his possession so his like his like little fisherman um jacket mm -hmm. um i i believe we brought the hat um all those little things that were kind of made him his character and really specific he had a bunch of those pieces together so once we saw that on him like it was it felt very naturally perfect it didn't seem like a caricature which is what not what we wanted right totally. but um like in addition to that um danielle had um made a big effort to get us a hold of um m16 rifle that's the rifle i wanted okay him. yeah um but it didn't arrive in time for the shoot so they had to scramble and grab, or she had to scramble and grab an N23, I believe the rifle is. Okay. And, and just adjusting to the fact that it was an N23 rifle and not an M16 was one of the funniest things in the world because I, like, there's, I have no reality of, of hunting myself. I did right. a bunch of research, but the idea that, that, that visually I probably wouldn't even know the difference if you would put yeah. those two rifles and then it just like, it just like, so it's little things like that on, right. on that is that you need to keep your mind agile and be like, everything may not work. We originally right. had a third character coming in at the end. Believe oh, really? Not. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and we, and it didn't feel right. And that, that changed in the edit and you know, totally. Well, I think this is great insight and it, and it touches on, you know, multiple different angles of, of filmmaking is that adaptability, staying on your toes, staying present, uh, never, never sort of solidifying and like, oh, this is just the way we're going to do it. And even even like you said, removing some of these pivotal lines or, or even uh, third characters in the edit just to make the snappiest, most polished thing, which it has to be hard, especially with the, the Pilgrim line. Everyone loved it. it. You're kind of bringing it from this thing. And then in the end, it didn't make the cut. But, you know, I really admire the ability to to you know give up the stuff that you love even just to, to produce something so uh so snappy and i mean this is a micro short it's something like six minutes but uh it is packed completely full um i'm interested uh stacy what are you working on next any new shorts any new features potentially so i'm well i'm going to be starring in a pilot okay that co-wrote with uh, my friend Ashley Cole, who's also co-starring in it. It's a multi-cam live studio audience comedy, oh, awesome. and it's getting produced in a mansion in Beverly Hills in October. That sounds uh, incredible. It, I, I mean, I'm very genuinely very excited about it. Um, Can you tell us anything about the nature of the uh, the story or your role in it? Um, well, I'm going to have to, I'm just trying to see what I can reveal. What uh, the, the biggest thing I can say is it's uh, an ensemble comedy okay. and it's meant to be a throwback to some of those um, classics like Taxi and Murphy Brown and okay. Old School Roseanne. So that sort of um, ensemble character work that I really felt, fall, you know, fell in love with. Yeah. And, you know. 
that's exciting. That sounds very fresh. I'm I'm looking <laughs> forward to uh, seeing that and seeing lots more from you, Stacy. Is there anything else you'd like to add about Hunt Me? Um, I hope the audience enjoys it. I hope it makes them happy. I feel hope they feel elated by it. Um, I hope it it has this little theme of you know be brave. Totally. Well, thank you so much, Stacy. I think people are going to really love this at the uh, Austin Comedy Film Festival coming up. Uh, I look forward to seeing it and much more from you soon. All right. Thank you so much. Have thank a great you. day. You too. Take care.